What's up, guys? I'm Miriam T. Staff. I'm Anna Banana. And, and you're, you're watching, watching Disney, Disney Channel. Channel. Do, 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 do. Now, nah, guys, we're just playing. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Please make sure you give a like and subscribe at the end of this video. Because today, dun, 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 we're going to be talking about common psychology myths. So make sure you grab your windbreakers because you're about to be blown away by this psychobabble. So apparently people think prefrontal lobotomies turn people into human vegetables. Anna, is that you? First off, a prefrontal lobotomy is a surgical procedure in which the nerve pathways in a lobe or lobes of the brain are severed for those in other areas. Formally, this is used as a therapeutic method. Bam. So I'm just gonna take a brief intermission here and like, I don't know, I have no idea why this guy is awake right now, but it's kind of weird. So like, don't pay attention to that. People believe lobotomies would treat mental illnesses, but this is a f false because mental dullness occurred, causing people to lose their personalities and were no longer to live by themselves. A patient came out paralyzed on one side and permanently disabled. They were unable to speak correctly and this changed their life for the worse and forever. Our next myth, perception. All right, guys. So. Do blind people have especially well-developed senses of hearing and touch? Let's find out. So, 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 through experience and training, the blind use their other senses, but more of the senses will not become measurably different, and it is learned behavior, and anyone can learn to use their other senses more effectively. All right, got all right, guys, so you know that a crucial part of everyone's successful YouTube channel is to have challenges. So for our next clip, we're going to be putting on or showing you a challenge and challenging ourselves. We're not doing the bird box challenge. No. So guys, a study showed that a study, a study shows that blind people were not born with well-developed senses um, and because it takes several years to grow that ability and to practice. Um, Stevie Wonder was a child prodigy um, who developed into one of the most creative musical figures in the 20th century and he became blind at birth. At, he became blind at birth and at the age of eight, he became a skilled musician. The next myth is IQ tests are biased against certain people. The accusation of test bias stem from representative heuristics, which is a human tendency to overlook specifics when a pattern is perceived. It's true that there are statistical differences of IQ test scores between demographics but this is due to outside factors and not the test itself. They are not biased against certain groups, but measures intelligence and cultures like Asian groups, which are likely to score higher on the test. Sit with your dog. Shake. Good girl. Good. So regarding our memory, we can remember events back to birth. Anna, that's crazy. Well, this is in fact not true because psychologists have discovered that children as young as three months old and six months old can, um, can form long-term memories. And the difference comes when the memories stick around. And it appears that babies are born with a more intact, implicit, or unconscious memory than us. So, Miriam. Yeah. Do you remember events in the womb? As a matter of fact, I do. Dark, dank, and cold, like my bedroom in the basement. 
Hypnosis is a unique trance state that differs in kind from wakefulness. Many explanations regarding hypnosis have been put forward, including the idea that when hypnotized, people are in a sleep state, sleep-like state in which they lose their willpower and are unable to remember what happened. Hypnotized people have shown not to act out of character when they're, hip when they're under hypnosis or following hypnosis. A trance state is characterized by extreme relaxation and imagination. Psychologists try to focus the trans state as being relaxed or focused. Anna, this is not going to work. Trust me. Okay. Okay. You will now start to get sleepy. Now raise your left hand. Face it towards your face. Now slap yourself. We are here at the second to last myth, development. So old age is typically associated with an increase of dissatisfaction and senility. That, my friends, is a crazy myth. Like, I don't even know how people even come up with this kind of stuff, but it just baffles me. And so <laughs> we're going to bust it for you. Actually, I am because it's my myth. So, people sometimes associate old age as becoming depressed, but however, studies have found that um, seniors are among the happiest age group. Why? Researchers at Duke University discovered a U-shaped happiness curve in a person's life, and it starts high with um, showing a lot of happiness in youth, and then um, bottoming out in the middle age, and then... Um, midlife crisis, my friends, okay, and rising again in old age. Guys, this is an unhappy child, and you want to know why people think that kids are happy all the time, or why they actually are happy all the time? Because of this reason, right here. People give them candy. Guys, I just want to let you know I'm going through a midlife crisis right now. That is all. Siri, proceed with the motorcycle order. You guys, I am so proud of my granddaughter. She is right there. She just graduated. This was her graduation robe that I stole at her graduation party because she graduated. And I'm so happy. So... As people get older, they typically gain a better sense of what really matters to them in life and not stress over the small things that they cannot control, like their bladder issues. And although many people over 65 begin to experience some um, physical and cognitive changes, they learn to live with them and live happy and productive lives. The last myth. Open-ended interviews are the best means of assessing personality. Open-ended or unstructured interviews possess low or at best moderate validity for assessing personality and tend to be less valid than structured interviews. Evidence from thousands of interviews tells us that their structured interviews are more reliable, valid, and less discriminatory than unstructured interviews. The way to properly assess personality through an interview is to use questions that aren't open-ended. Situational and past behavior questions are the best means of assessing personality because those assess on the job behaviors related to a specific personality trait. You guys, this is how you don't interview someone to determine their personality. Miriam. Anna. Are you a creative person? I am. I believe Wrong. So. The right way to interview someone is on a scale of inaccurate to accurate, do you completely, do you complete tasks successfully? 11 out of 10. BMS broke my scale. Okay, we're good. Wow guys, we're finally done. That was some eye-opening myth-busting. We hope you enjoyed this week's video on common myths and our psychobabably society. <laughs>
Make sure you stay tuned for next semester to see more presentations. Just kidding, we hope you actually don't because we hope you pass this class, which means you won't need to come back. Anyway, thanks for watching our show and our YouTube channel and stay tuned for credit. Subscribe. Bye. Bye.